Praise the Lord. Welcome to Greater Refuge Church right here in Henderson with my pastor, it's William T. Winston. We are located on America Road. We thank you for joining us this morning. Before we get started with our Sunday School lesson, we would like to have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the merciful name of Jesus, we come before you with humble hearts. Lord God, we thank you and bless you and praise you and we glorify you and magnify you. You're such a great God and a sovereign God. You are king and our Lord God, we just love you today because you first loved us. We bless you this morning. Heavenly Father, we repent of our sins and our transgressions, our iniquity, the things we've done knowingly and the things we've done unknowingly. We walked in pride and we walked in arrogance and unbelief when we walked in, Lord God, fear. Father, you know our sins, the things we said when we lied and cheated. Whatever we did that was not pleasing unto you, when we were selfish and self-righteous, Father, we're asking you, God, even right now to forgive us. And Father, as far as the east is from the west, we ask you to remember our sins no more. We, ask, we thank you, Father God, for forgiving us. We thank you for your son and the blood that he shed on Calvary's cross. We thank you, Lord God, that he has gotten over all power and heaven and earth in his hand. And he's sitting on your right hand on our behalf, interceding for us. Father, we pray and ask you right now in the merciful name of Jesus to bless the hearts of us, your people, God, as we hear your word today and speak to us, Father, that we may grow closer to you and become more like your son. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus to work on us today. Give us listening ears, God, and help us to hear with clarity what the Spirit has to say with the, to the church. God, we bless and praise you, Father, even right now, God, for how, what you're doing in our lives, how you're touching bodies and healing them, how you're healing minds and souls. And we thank you, Father God, for how you're keeping us protected and covered under dangerous highways we travel to and fro. We thank you, God, for you have met our needs, and we are grateful for that. We thank you for the tests, the trials, and the tribulation. God, we know that they were working for our good. So we're grateful this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father, to help us to be humble before you, Father, not thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to. And Father, help us to bless in your blessings, to walk in your blessing, God. For it is a, both a privilege and an honor, Lord God, that we are even called yours. And so it's in your son Jesus' name we do thank you right now. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our Sunday school lesson will be coming from the book of Romans. The book of Romans. Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8. We have been talking of, of, from the book of Romans and Romans 6 and 7 and 5. We've been discussing... Um, the letter that Paul wrote to the Romans concerning salvation and the instruction he gave them as God gave them. He, one thing he said was the most important thing of all is our God's plan of salvation concerning our lives. And so it's very important for us to understand God's plan of salvation, which begins with repentance. So we need to repent. Repent for our sins. We need to repent. Then we need to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to repent. We need to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The word God tells us it is unto us, our children, and our children's children, as many as the Lord our God shall call. So we need to make sure we follow God's prescription for salvation. Repent, be baptized, and fill with the Holy Ghost. It's what's going to keep us, it's what's going to get us into heaven, and it's what's going to put us in the family of God. And then Paul told us about how um, we are blessed to even be in God's plan of salvation because we were born sinners. See, from back in the time when Adam and Eve sinned, it brought sin upon us, a sin upon the nation. So we are just blessed and privileged once again because God was mindful of us back then, the plan began. To save us, to keep us from eternal damnation. So God has been mindful of us with the apple of his eye, and it's an honor and it's a privilege. And we thank God for that today. And then Paul reminds us that we are justified. He reminds us, meaning we have been declared not guilty, not because of what we did, but because of what Jesus did on the cross. Because he died in our state. The word of God says the ways of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. So because we were sinners, we were worthy of death, never to live again. But because God loved us so much, he sent his son to die that we might live. And because he died and he went in the grave, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. And now 
we have an opportunity to not only to get it right with God, but be in relationship with God, our rightful place being restored with God. And so I beseech you, brethren, that you uh, make sure um, that you are in God's plan of salvation. And this week, we are going to be talking about us being more than conquerors. How can you be more than conquerors? <laughs> conquerors are most you can be. But we are more than conquerors. We are victorious. We are super conquerors. We are in a place where because we don't have to fight, God is fighting ourselves, and we know that he is all-powerful. So it makes us more than conquerors. And the time is A.D. 56, and the place that Paul wrote this letter from is Corinth. And our golden text is coming from Romans chapter 8, verses 31. It says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. So we're going to go on and get into our scripture. Beginning Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things, all things means exactly that, all things, everything, no matter what it is, work together. That means the good and the bad. So we want the good things from God. We want the blessings from God. But we don't want the bad things. We don't want the tests and trials and the tribulations. We don't want Satan to attack us when he does we um, begin to doubt our relationship with God. Maybe I'm messing up in this area, or, or maybe God hasn't forgiven me, or maybe God's not able. But it says, all things work together for good to them that love God. So we got to make sure, first of all, our love towards God is a pure love. We got to make sure, first and foremost, that we really truly love God. We can't have this half-hearted love that we have towards people, you know, I love you if you love me, I love you as long as you do what I want you to do, I love you if you can give me, no, that's not the love that God wants us to have, he wants us to have the kind of love that in spite of whatever we go through, regardless of what we have to um, do, we're going to still love him and still trust and have faith to believe that God knows what's best for us. So he said, all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his person. And the word of God tells that many are called, but few are chosen. So who are the ones that are chosen by God? The ones that will answer the call from God. Because once God sent his word our way, we got to make a decision in our mind whether or not we want to be on the Lord's side. Joshua says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. So we have to make up in our mind where we're going to be. Are we going to answer the call of God? Are we going to be one of the true believers? Because this is where the true believers come in at. We got people that say, believe. I believe that there's a God. The word of God said that the same believe also. The devil believe and they tremble. They know that he exists. So that doesn't mean anything. They're still not serving God. They ain't loving God. So God is looking for true believers, those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And even that they are looking to God, the author and the finisher of their faith, they're not concerned or they're not worried about the things that are going on around them because they know in the midst of everything, God is right there and fighting on their behalf. And it says in 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, yeah. that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So who, for whom he did for no, the ones that he loved. Mm. And the word of God tells us that God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his only begotten son. So he loved us all mm. in the beginning. That's, why the, that's when the plan of salvation began. He loved us so much in the beginning that even though we was in sin, even though we were disobedient, he still loved us. So I got to put a plan together, a plan of salvation. Because I want my people, the ones that are going to love me, I want them to be right where I'm at. I want them to rest, rule, and abide in me. I want them to walk down streets or go. I want them to have the very best. So those that he loved and those that loved him, he predestinated to be conformed to the image of Son. So when you love God, you allow the Holy Ghost to take you and shape you and make you and mold you to your exact who His Son is. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to be just like His Son. What did His Son do? The Word of God said He was obedient unto death. It says he knew no sin. And while God extends grace and mercy our way, he will forgive us of our sin. He still wants us to have the mind and the heart to want to be like his son. His son was obedient unto death. Not only was his son obedient unto death, but his son went to the cross. 
-hmm. The word of God says we have to lay down our life. Mm -hmm. And we should lay it down for the brethren. We don't just need to lay it down for ourselves. Because we lay it down for ourselves, we'll pick it back up. Mm -hmm. So if we do like Jesus did, and he laid down his life for the brethren, he laid his life down for us. He went to the cross where he died. He took all that sin upon himself. The word of God said he that knew no sin took our sins upon him. Everything that we did, that's why we don't, there's no condemnation. Because everything that we did, Jesus took it upon himself. And when we believe and trust in what Jesus actually did on the cross and love him, then we didn't have no reason to walk around shame or sad or our head hung down. Or we can lift our heads up. The Bible says, lift our eyes unto the hills from whence cometh thy help. Yes, we mess up. Yes, we sin. Yes, we get it wrong sometimes. But we don't have to be condemned because our our um, father as a son sitting on the right hand of him in the seat on our behalf and said, Father, I died for that. When we repent, he said, Father, I died. When you lock, Father, I, when you said, Lord, forgive me, he said, Father, I died for that. And now you are not guilty. He found you not guilty. So even when the accuser of the brethren, when Satan himself comes before the Father and said, They are hypocrites, they are um, scandalous. They are, are, are this, they're that, they're fornicate, they're adult, whatever. Jesus could say, but Father, I died for that. Yeah. And so we've got a hope. Yeah. We've got a hope. And it says right here, he did, or he also did predestinate be conformed to the image of the Son. Mm -hmm. So that he could, so we could be the image, the very image of his son. Mm -hmm. And verse 30 said, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. And he's talking about as if it's already happened. So that lets me know right there when I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross, when I can trust and believe that God's word is true, I'm already glorified. I can just look for that day when the trumpet going to sound and the dead in Christ going to rise up and I can believe and trust and know without a shadow of doubt I'm going to be changed in a moment and a twinkle of another eye. I'm going to become just like his son because it said he did already glorified. Already, as if it's already done. So it's a, no, it's emphatically declared that when I walk up before God and do what is pleasing unto Him, trust in Him, I can look forward to that day. It don't matter what people say about you. No matter what the cat do, what the dog did, don't matter, about, don't matter what the neighbors say, don't matter what the enemy say, don't none of that matter. Because Jesus has already taken our sins upon yeah. himself. All he wants us to do is answer the call. All, right. All he wants us to do is say, Lord, I believe. Forgive me, yeah. Lord God, for I have sinned. But help my unbelief. And then turn towards him. And do, a, do according to what his word says. That's why it's so important for us to do according to the word. We can walk around here hard headed. We have some hard headed saints. All right. All right. We walk around here and think we know better than God. We think that we know better than Jesus. We think that uh, we Je Jesus and we are his brother. But we think that we um, did more than Jesus has done. And so God just going to automatically go just say, okay, whatever you do is okay. But that's not true. That is not true. But people, we got to get that right. Now is the time of the day of salvation. Now is the time for us to get it right. And no matter what you did yesterday, now is the day. If God allowed you to see the day, the day is the day to get it right with him. Yeah. Today is the day. Today is the day to repent. Today is the day to be baptized. Today is the day to get the Holy Ghost. Today is the day. Now we got to hope. I said, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against it? Don't matter. Like I said, what the dog said, what the cat said, what the imp said. Don't matter what Satan said, none of his imps say. Don't matter what none of them do. Then let them bring the test. Let them bring the, the trial. James said, count it all joy. Count it all joy in the midst of the fire. In the midst of you're going to come out as pure gold. In the end, you're going to rest, rule, and reign with God. Count it all joy. And I know sometimes it's hard because it gets hard for me too. Sometimes I'll be going through so much, I'll be like, Lord, I just don't know what to do. Because it seems like if I do it this way or wrong, if I do it that way, I don't know what to do. But I bless God that he said, I'll never leave you. And in no watch for second. Even if everybody else turn their back on you, God will be right there. He ain't going nowhere. He's, I'm not going anywhere. I'm right there. No matter how hard it gets, 
Cry out to me. I'm right there. And that's all we got to do is cry out to yeah. God. And we will feel his presence. That's why worship is so important. Yeah. That's why worship is, we want the, um, the praise and thank God for everything and jump in there and shout and run in church. But worship is so important because then you can feel the presence of God. You will know without a shadow of doubt. God is right there. When you start giving him his work, you'll start feeling his presence. Yes. It's very important for us. Yes. So it don't matter who can be against it. If they try to fight against even on the job and they try to fight against what they don't realize, they're not coming up against you. They're coming up against God. They're coming up against God. The neighbors don't want to do right. They're shooting all the way. They're not shooting at you. They're shooting up against God. I don't care what they do. They might think it's you, but what they don't realize is actually God. It's God. It's God. And, that, and it, it says, right, who is it? Who can be against us? You know, well, who can win against us? Who can who can win out the, the battle that they come against? They can talk about you. They can lie on you. They can try to steal from you. It don't matter. None of that matters. Because when they come up against you, they are not actually coming up against you, but coming up against God. And he that spared, this is the part that I love. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, I call that privilege. Amen. I call that a privilege. Amazing. And let me tell you what a privilege is. Mm -hmm. It's a law for just certain people. Benefits enjoyed by a certain group. And that privilege is for the true believers. Because we want to think it's for everybody. It's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's for the true believers. Mm -hmm. The privilege we want. And you know what? And now in the news, they talk about a certain color of people are privileged. But I got news for them. Right, the true believers are the ones that's privileged. Amen. Yeah. We're the ones. We can be in the back, and next thing you know, we're in the front. But the word of God said, I will, to, I, that he that is last is going to be first. He said, he'll make us the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. He said, he'll bless our comings, our going in the city, in the field. He's going to bless our bars, our store. So we are the true believers of the privilege. Mm -hmm. Don't matter who, what it looked like or who it's like. They may look like they got everything. They got five cars and six trucks and a, a house on the sit up on the hill and, and they might have um, 40 acres and, and a mule, whatever they got. But they're not the privilege if they are not true believers. And we got to understand God's word. He said, I'm not a man that I should lie, amen. nor the son of man I should repent. So his promises are yea and amen. Every amen. promise that he has written in his Bible is for the true believers. Amen. So we don't have to be anything but privileged. And it says that he spared not his own son, his own, his own son, the only son he had. He sent him to the cross. He is the one who died for us. We're not going to send our children to the cross. You better not mess with these people's children. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you, right, don't mess with my children. Mm -hmm. don't, you can do what you want to do with me, but don't you mess with my children. Mm -hmm. And they ain't going to send their children to the cross for you. But God, the holy God, the only true wise God, the God of the heavens and the earth and underneath it and all that, the God, our God, he sent his only son to die for us that we might live. So we are privileged. And it says, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? How dare you start looking at God's elect, God's people and start charging them with something. Talking, judging them, talking about who they are and who they're not. How dare you start? Who, who, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? We, that's why we got to be careful with what we do. When we start saying that, I know the Bible. Okay, if you know the Bible, you need to start talking about the saints of God. Mm -hmm. You need to stop judging the saints of God. Yes. The true believers, now, The true believers. Yes. Because we don't know who the true believers are. We got to be careful with all of them. All, right. all the believers. Yes. Don't matter if they got saved today, this morning, all right. or they've been saved a hundred years. Right. You got to be careful. Because then you start getting God's business when you right. start judging them yes. and start talking about them yes. and start acting like they are beneath you. Because we're God's all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All, everybody. That's you, me, and anybody else. We all have. From the time of Eve and Adam fallen, all, all have sinned. So we can't um, judge people. We can't lay no charges. We can't talk about what they did or what they didn't do or how they should have done it. 
Because where God tells us to save ourselves mm -hmm. and this untoward generation, yeah. we got to make sure we save. Mm -hmm. We got to make sure we're doing everything God said for us to do. Yes. It's going to take everything and some more for us to stay saved. And because of that, we ain't got time to look at nobody else. I want everybody to say, but I'm going to tell y'all, some days I struggle through myself, so I can't, make, I can't be worried about what you're doing. That I can be called on you and say, wait a minute, that's wrong. Because it takes everything and some more. And the word of God said that love of many going to wax cold during this time period. Because we keep talking about the end times, and these are the last days. And once before, uh, one of another said, last Sunday, and every Sunday I tell you the same thing. And we know this are, these are the last days, and we better make sure we got it right. Because we ain't going to be able, once that trumpet sound, we're not going to be able to say, let me get it right, Lord. That's right. That's right. Let me, give me a minute. I'm, I'm running late right now, Lord. Just hold on so I can get it right. Because mm -hmm. it's going to be too late then. Right. He's going to say, I know you not. Mm -hmm. Depart from me. And that's going to be a sad, sad day. Yeah. It's that mm -hmm. it is God that justifies. It's yeah. God who declares who is guilty and not guilty. Thank you, not us. Thank not us. We can't do it. What God calls the people, the teachers and the preachers and the pastors, he calls us to get a word. He don't call us for the um, grab you by the hand and make you do nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He calls us to do it. That's why it's so important for us to be in our rightful place. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not in our place, then somebody can slip through the crack. That's right. And then their blood is going to be required at our hand. Mm -hmm. We got to make sure we're doing everything that God tells us to do. I think I said it on last week and the week before that. And what would happen if God took a vacation mm -hmm. while we driving down the road at night and we can't hardly see and a car is on the wrong side of the road and we holler at Jesus. He said, wait a minute, I'm off today. Wow. Where will we be? Mm -hmm. And I know we like to say this. because I've say to myself, I ain't going to, to church today. I'm going shopping, but I can still do God's work because I can still be a witness. Wow. I ain't in place. I'm not in place. God said for me to be on Sunday morning teaching Sunday school, and if I'm in shopping, then I ain't in place. All right. That means I'm somewhere else. I'm out of I'm out of the will of God, and so we have to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't want God to be out of place, we may make sure we're in place. But this is all a part of loving God. I re um I remember Bishop Harvey used to say, taking an unscheduled sabbatical. <laughs> God ain't scheduled. We taking an unscheduled one. We just doing what we want to do. But if we are loving God, because like I said, we are privileged. But this is for true believers. This ain't for everybody. So if you, if, if it ain't for you, it ain't for you. Mm -hmm. Man, so if it ain't for you, don't worry about it. If you're a true believer, it's for you. Amen. It's for you. If you're a true believer, it's for you. And verse and 34 says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, brother, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Mm -hmm. Who is a good Because we like to condemn people to hell. Mm -hmm. We like to say who going and who ain't going. Mm -hmm. But God, word of God says, so who, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. And the word of God tells us, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So you can't condemn me to hell if I'm in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world. But the world through a body might be saved. He didn't come to condemn anybody to hell. He didn't. You, he came so that people would be saved. Thank That's what he came up. That was God's plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. But as true believers, because we privilege, we want to make sure we are walking and talking and living according to the word of God so that the Holy Ghost can transform our lives yes. so that we'll be more like the Son. Right. But if we're saying the Lord is getting ready to come back, then we need to make sure right now and today, once again, that we're getting it right. Yeah. Or we're trying to get it right. It says, and who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us. Now, like I say, he's right there, sitting beside God. The Son is interceding on our behalf. On our behalf, praying for us and telling God and, and, and speaking up for us when the accuser of the brethren come up. So who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And sometimes people get a little, we get a little confused with that. Because we think it's saying, who, who gonna, what's going to get in the way of me loving God? Mm -hmm. But that ain't what it's saying. It's saying, what, what, what's going to get in the way to keep God from loving me? That's what it says. What, what is it that can keep God from loving me? There is nothing that can stop God from loving us. He said, it's not his will that any should perish. And we perish because it's our decision. 
Because God is such a gentleman. He's not going to force anybody to serve him. He's not going to force anybody to love him. He's not going to force anybody to live for him. He's not going to force anybody to choose him. But we can make that choice. We can make that decision and decide, I don't want to serve God. Or I'm going to half-heartedly save God. But like once again, that why we half-heartedly saving God, serving God now, we got to remember whether we want God to half-heartedly keep us and love us. But it says, right, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall the test, shall the trials, shall the rest, shall the things I'm going through, shall persecution when people talk about me and persecute me for, for the gospel's sake, shall famine, shall I be so hungry and, and, and I'm so and I'm so full of peril and, and so much war that God will stop loving me? No. Can I sin so bad that God will stop loving me? No. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When we were yet in sin, God loved us. And while we are still in sin, God is still loving us. So it ain't nothing we can do to stop God from loving us, but we can turn from God. And that's the thing. We can turn from God. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God said, that, Paul said, there is nothing. There is nothing. I don't care. You can walk around in so much pride that God will say, I don't love them because they're prideful. Because God will still save us. I don't care if you get so bad that so you are drunk or a drug addict and you out in the gutter. God don't stop loving you. He's going to steal it. I don't care if you can't um, articulate. I don't care if you got a first grade education. Mm -hmm. God don't care about none of that. That's why he ain't caught up with all these doctor degrees. These people get that just a guy to bug himself. Everybody want to be a doctor, have a doctor degree. That ain't getting you no more love for God than what I'm going to get if I ain't got no degree. All right. Right. God ain't going to love you no more if you got five bank accounts. Then he loved me. It don't matter about that. But what we've got to do as people are asking, if we say we're true believers, what we got to do is stop making people think they beneath us because they ain't where we're at. Because God still loves them. So you got to keep them walking around. I can't get saved. They don't need me trying to be saved. I can't never live saved. I can't never, because I can't be like them. I don't care if you got a rose rose. I don't care. A uh, Maserati, I don't care what kind of car you got in your driveway. I don't care if you got a thousand acres and a three-story house. I don't care if you got a hundred rooms in your house. I don't care if you live in a mansion. It ain't heaven. You still ain't got there. I don't care if you can quote from Genesis to Revelation. I don't care if you done been in school and they call you a doctor and a divinity. I don't care about none of that and God don't either. God don't care if I can't quote this Bible. God cares that I can live the life that he has saved for me to live. He cares that I'm transformed into the likeness of his son. He cares that I love him. He cares that my heart has been changed. And I no longer have that stone out. He cares that I care about my neighbors. He cares that I'm willing to forgive those who have done stuff to me. He, that's what he cares about. God don't care about this other stuff. The word of God tells this stuff going to pass away. All this stuff will pass away. But heaven is going to last forever. And that's what God is focused on. How I'm going to get to heaven. That's why we got to learn. Look, look, the Bible tells us forgive while it's day. Forgive while it's day. Forgive as soon as something. Forgive and don't hold on to that. Because what happened is a root of bitterness get in our heart. And we know what roots do. We know thing about trees or, or plants or flowers. It goes there to get there further and further. And after a while, if you look at trees, when the roots get so far down in the ground, you can't get them up. You can't reach your hand on there and pull them up. And that's what happened with our hearts when we don't forgive. The bitterness just keep going. It goes down and down. And it's hard to get it out. But I know a God that's able to do exceeding, abundant, above all we can ask and think. And he can pull all those roots up. Mm -hmm. yes, he can take that hatred out. Yeah. He can get rid of that anger. Mm -hmm. 
and he can put love in our hearts. So that even we can love the unloved, the people that mistreat us, the people that hate on us, the people, the naysayers, those people that walk around and, and try to take them, that manipulate us, those people that do all kinds of stuff on our jobs, in our homes, in the church, wherever it may be. God will put so much love in our heart that we are loved just like his son does. If you're a true believer. Amen. If you are a true believer, and I know sometimes we get God have to work on us because He has to work on me. Yes. I ain't there. I ain't gonna act like I am there. He works on me. He lets me know when I'm wrong. That's the thing we don't understand. We think people can just get up and give a message where the message came to them first. All right, amen. So if the message came to us first, that means he was straightening us out first. He was letting us know where we was at first. So that when we give it to you, then it'll he we you'll get it and get it right. So we can't, we can't walk around and say, that word ain't for me. Yeah, God gave me the word to give him. He gave it to you first. He put it in your mouth first. And he let, or he let you read it first or write it, whatever you want to do with it. He gave it to you first. It was for you first. And you got to get it right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for your forgiving power and your saving grace. We thank you, God, for your love and your strength and your joy and your peace. We thank you, God, that you will call us privileged, that you will choose us out of all the people in the world to show forth your word. God, we don't have it all right, and we ask you to forgive us, Lord. But, Father, in the name of Jesus, we submit our bodies to you. Live in sacrifice. We ask the Holy Ghost to work on us, work on our mindset, work on our heart, work on our lives until we are transformed into the very image of your Son. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for your word, God, that you sent our way. We thank Thank you, God, for loving us enough, God, that you, Lord God, will call us out of darkness into your marvelous light to show forth your glory. Yeah. Lord God, and we thank you, we praise you, we bless you, and we glorify you. We ask you, Lord God, that you will bless your word, that it will preach somebody's heart, that they may come to learn. What must I do to be saved? Amen. It's in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, we thank you for joining us today. I'm right here at 10 o'clock when the word will come forth from our pastor, William T. Winston. We bid you God's grace and peace.